We are live here on the Action Figure Grader YouTube channel. And uh, I know I've got a few folks in here because I've already been seeing comments. And today's live stream is going to be taking a closer look at some amazing mint on cards that Chris W over at Rogue Five Toys, one of my best friends in the hobby, one of my best friends, period. He has an incredible collection that he just got in of vintage Kenner and Palatoy as Takaras. He's got everything, mint on card, that will all be for sale starting tomorrow on Rogue Five Toys, and we'll get into the details there. Uh, I need to, before we dig in any further, before I forget, I want to say thank you to Sith Droid. He sent me a super earlier this week, a YouTube super for a video that he liked, and that's like his third or fourth super that he sent. So Sith Droid, thank you again for doing that. I also have a new Patreon supporter named Aaron M., Aaron is a buddy of mine I've known for a long time. He's got an incredible Polish bootleg collection, especially Yoda Focus Collector. Thank you, Aaron, for becoming a Patreon. Appreciate both you guys. And uh, we've already got some folks in here. Chris, how are you doing today? We are live. Live. <laughs> <laughs> doing good. Waiting for this. Um, thank you for the opportunity for having me on to um, help uh, show this big sale coming up. Speaking of Chris, here's your brother. He is already in. He's got his own channel devoted to Lego, the minifig collectors. Yep. Charles, can't wait to see John's face live. Been waiting all week. I am so sorry that that is your highlight of your week there. Gary Wallace, <laughs> Gary Wallace, a good buddy of mine. Uh, he is in. Come on, you two. Hurry up. Good day. He is all uh, Lynette Snow is in here. I claim everything. No, you don't. You're so full of it. Uh, Star Wars Daddy, Michael A. Uh, he's got his own channel as well. want to make sure to, to give him a shout out. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Um, bear with me as we do the intros. The Blacked Out Ewoks, the man, the myth, the legend. Men want to be him. Women want to be with him. The Blacked Out Ewoks. B.O.E. B.O.E. is in the house. Lynette again. Darth Wizzy Wizard is in the house. Uh, Lynette is obviously friends with Aaron. There you go. Aaron, thank you again for becoming a Patreon supporter. Let's go. Gary Moore, another Patreon supporter, good buddy of mine. He's been over at my house. I think he came over during our last hoorah at my house for the last uh, convention you guys were in town for. I'm not, I want to go ahead and get this out publicly. Uh, I'm not, not sure that people are going to be able to come over next time because it's in October, right during the heart of my kids' school week. So, uh, I might be coming out to you guys to have fun um, as long as you're home and that, and you know, and, and you'll be around and it's fine. Oh yeah, no, I'll be around for sure. Uh, Brett on fet, another YouTuber and good buddy of mine. I love that new logo, by the way, that's hot, hot uh, like that. Um, and then we got uh, big woo D four seven one seven. That is a really complicated name, but I do love the, I'd love the icon there. Uh, I believe it's pronounced big wood. Oh, big wood. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little slow. I haven't had enough coffee yet today, Chris. Okay. All right. So I think that's enough intros. Um, you know, be sure to like this stream, guys. It does help out the channel. Follow me on Instagram at Action Figure Grader. Now, Chris, let's get to the meat of this. All right. Tell us a little bit about this collection, how you got it, and that kind of thing. And I'm going to put you on single frame so people don't have to look at my stupid face. Oh, wow. That's really right up there. Okay. Thank you. Um, you yeah, look so like you're doing great. You're doing great right now. <laughs> doing great. So this collection came um, overseas. I'm not going to say exactly where it came from. I learned so my mysterious. lesson the last time. So mysterious. Well, well, the last time I gave out the state where the collection came from, people got really butthurt that it didn't stay within the state and that it left it and that someone, you know, I guess, reached out and tried to sell it. So let's just say it came from overseas. Um, at one point I was going to travel down there myself and pack it up and ship it home or whatever, but it just came, it was a lot easier to do it this way. Um, everything's coming in sections. So as I said, there's 366 mocks and not all of them are in yet. I'm still waiting for, I believe another 75. They should be in on Monday or Tuesday. And I'll post that on the page next week also, because those will just be, They'll just follow in line, you know, with the rest of them. Um, they're going through DHL 24 hour service. Believe it or not, it's actually shipping 24 hours from overseas. So it's wow, it's been, it's been fantastic. Um, can't complain about that. So 
have some items right now that I'll show. Um, Real couple... quick, I'm, I'm, hey Chris, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man, but no, you can, can you can you give a little background in terms of how the sales are going to go? Because you know oh, yeah, stuff so moves that's... really quick, and you know just explain the process and how to join and things like that. So I was going to start selling on Monday, but I decided to start selling uh, tomorrow, Sunday instead, because I actually got all the pictures ready and the prices. I got everything in order. And basically, you know, I, I just try and start early in the morning and I kind of go through all day. I have three little kids at home that are four and under. So I kind of like work around their schedule. So sometimes you might see me post five cards in a row and then there might be nothing for a half an hour. And then you might see 10 in a row. I'm just going around my kids' schedule and how they allow me to work. So I'm going to post a lot tomorrow and Monday. If you want to join the page, it's Rogue Five Toys on Facebook. And real quick, Chris, real quick, uh, in the video description for this live stream, there is a Facebook link to, to join Rogue Five. But explain the joining process because it's a little, you know, we've had to turn down some folks here over the last couple of days. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Facebook and stuff, and we're all for if you want to make a fake profile, you can join Facebook, make a fake profile. Just reach out to me, John, or the other four idiots beforehand and say, hey, I'm making a fake, you know, a fake name because a lot of people just don't want their name out there. They don't want their privacy, you know, being shown, whatever, whatever the case is. Just tell us beforehand if you're going to join. But when you do join the page. You have to answer the questions because you automatically get declined if you don't answer the four questions. And I think the first question actually is, do you understand if you don't answer these questions that you will be automatically declined? And I would say nine out of 10 people don't answer the question. <laughs> it's just my it's it's mind boggling to me. So everyone just gets denied all the time. And you have to do that, though, because there's a lot of bots that are on Facebook and they send you all these requests and like, you don't know who's real. You don't know who's fake. That's why the questions are really are there to like help protect the page and just make sure that you're kind of getting like real legit people and not just like fake bots in there. So. And um, then uh, real quick, Chris, and then, so what happens is you'll be posting stuff with lots of photos, the price, and then they just have to claim in the comments, right? Yeah, you pretty much just claim in the comments. Like, I think everyone knows by now that I don't sell anything beforehand. I don't sell things privately. I make everything public. I make everything public on the page. I want it to be fair for everybody. Everyone technically has a shot. Now, I'm not thinking that everyone's going to be on their phones waiting all day because I wouldn't be either myself. So I really can't give an exact time. There's 366 cards here. So to say I'm going to get this all done in a week, a day, certain times of a day it's impossible for me to do that but yeah for the most part i'm going to list one card at a time there's going to be a price there's like 30 pictures usually of each one claim it in the comments section i mean if you're if you're a patreon member of our page which is five idiots talking toys so it's patreon.com uh backslash five idiots talking toys they all get a 48 hour preview of every collection that comes up for sale now they can't buy the items so they just see the items before anyone else does. They see the pictures and they can see a price. So when an item gets listed and you do see something get claimed really fast, it's just because someone already knows the information beforehand. But okay. again, nothing is technically for sale. Everything is sold fair and square on a page. So really quick, I need to give a shout out to my son, Carson. Ninja Star Gaming in Shorts, he has his own YouTube channel. He's the greatest Fortnite player I've ever seen in my life. I'm not even kidding, Chris. There was like, I've seen some clips of him taking down five people, what five against one, headshot, 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 and game well, over. I'm a follower of his page. You sent me it a while ago, and I have watched him, and it's just him running around killing everybody. Hey, real quick, I got a question from yeah. Lynette Snow. Are you putting these up on Patreon first? And so let's go into the Patreon uh membership well, and how that perks well, are these, these have already been up on patreon lynette i think you've already seen all these because you are a patreon member <clears throat> so i mean are you talking about the new ones that are going to be coming in on monday yes they're going to hit patreon first you're going to have at least 24 hours 48 hours and then i'm going to post them on rogue a preview and then they'll be for sale probably towards the end of the week only because again there's so many mocks here that i don't know how many i'm going to get through a day and how many days it's going to take so but yeah, um, as I said, 
I've seen the preview, but not individually. Well, you're supposed to ask me for them individually. That's why. If if there's something that you're interested in, you just message the person who's posting it on Patreon, like, hey, I'm interested in who, you know, whatever. And then I send you the pictures of that one and then a price, which I've done, you know, multiple times already with all your Darth Vader's that you love. Well, show us some good stuff here. People are, are anxiously waiting, salivating at these vintage toys. Okay. I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna show two pieces of a collection that came in last week. It's a different collection, but you know. How many times do you get a three pack in? Like this is the first one I've ever held, seen before, wow. like in real life. So this one is actually still for sale on the page. There's been a lot of offers, and a lot of people want to do like you know six month and nine month payment plans, and I, I just can't do like a nine month payment plan on something. It's just a little too long, for me. But this is one of the items still for sale. It's awesome, graded in eighty five. And what's the price? This is fifteen thousand dollars. Yep. So. Yeah, and that's you know the funny thing is that you know everyone's like whoa that's that's a big number, you know we you and I did our research on this and that's actually very fairly priced for what it I, is. Yeah, I really haven't seen one sell for less than fifteen if we're talking like ten years ago. So. And yep. then here's another item which is the double telescoping Obi Wan. He got graded an 80, and a lot of people reached out about him. I, I think people were just more shocked to see what the price was. I think people probably thought he was like two or three thousand dollars, honestly. But there was no. three there was three people that were serious about buying this. It sold for twenty thousand dollars or whatever it was, and mm -hmm. I listed it on a page, and it got claimed instantly. I think it sold within five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I remember one that was on a different Facebook group. And it was ungraded, and it sold for more than that price. So I thought it, that was a very fair price. It was ungraded, and it sold for nineteen thousand dollars. I think it was like last year. Oh, it was nineteen. Okay, I thought it was yeah, more. it was nineteen thousand. So you know, well, cool piece. So congrats to the new owner of that. He's on a short term payment plan, which I don't mind doing. All these pieces. So again, all these pieces that are coming up for sale, you could do a payment plan on any of the pieces you want. I just try and make it like reasonable. I like to stick to around four to six weeks. Like if a piece is a hundred dollars and you tell me I need six weeks, I'm probably going to say no. But if it's like $500 and you say, Hey, can I get four weeks? Absolutely. Like no problem. Like I just try and keep it at, at, a, at a reasonable length for myself at least. Cause I have so much money being laid out on these things. So this is a 12 back uh, Tuscan Raider 12 back a, Got great. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, no, absolutely awesome piece. For whatever reason, and I don't know if you feel the same, Tuscan Raiders, a lot of time when I see them, they're just always in terrible shape. Yeah. They now, give, give me a close up, Chris, on that one, real quick. On that one, get a close up of the figure. Is that the light brown? Yeah. See, that, I think that's the light brown paint scheme. I mean, it's a, yeah. I know the earlier release is like a light brown, and people get all. Freak out. Yeah, they freak out about it. I, I sell loose figures all the time. I feel like I've had plenty of them, and I don't sell them for any more money than what a dark one goes for. But. We got a question from uh, Chris W. Do you still get a buzz from getting these collections in? Oh, without a doubt. Like, with, Yeah, absolutely. And I've told John this many times. I don't care if it's a mock collection. I don't care if it's loose figures. I don't care if it's vehicles. I get just as excited for $5 pieces as I would – five thousand dollar pieces because i just love doing all of this all these toys every time i see it i just like love holding it i love taking pictures i just love the whole process of doing it so i'm just happy that i'm 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 grateful that i'm able to actually do this as a job right now i stay home with my kids as you can see this is their playroom so they kind of play all back here they have this whole area and then i'm over here doing my work so it's fantastic this is a 12 back, I think, A Luke Farm Boy 75 plus that will be for sale on the page. Beauty. Stormtrooper 85, 12 back C, I believe. I think there's a couple of Stormtroopers. Wow, well, 85. Obi Wan. Just going through a couple of 12 backs and then I'll get to some ESBs and stuff. This is an 80 grade. 
Awesome. Awesome. Next is the Jawa 12 back B. Graded an 80. Oh, that is so tempting. So I, I should be wearing so. I should be wearing my gloves for this. Everyone knows I like I love my gloves. I should be wearing this. So I, I apologize to everyone that my sweaty, greasy fingers are all over this stuff. Um, here is an ATAT -AT driver. This is actually his debut card. Oh, that's nice. 41 A. Um, awesome shape, unpunched, nice mm -hmm. Toys R Us sticker. I know people don't like the stickers, but when I see a Toys R Us sticker, it just brings back memories for me. So, I And the placement stickers. on that one's not too bad, the sticker placement. Yeah, I, I mean, when they place them in the middle and it's covering the face, I completely understand, but... That's yeah, that's cool. awesome. I really that's want cool. that one. That's, well, you, you really want everything, John. That's I cool. do. I do. I'm showing a power droid, and people are probably like, oh, why are nice. you showing a power droid? I don't. Most of the power droids you see are usually on Star Wars cards. You don't see a lot of them on Empire, and you don't see a lot of them on Jedi. Very so, tough to get on the Empire card. This happens to be a 31 back, which you really don't see a lot of on the 31 back. And then, you know, it has some scuffing on the back and whatever, but. It's still just a really cool card to have on a different card back. My son's going to buy me some of these for Father's Day with his hey, Car $4. Carson, payment. Carson, anything that you need, let me know. I'm going to charge you double the price for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Showing this one, this is a Luke Jedi. You know, he has some veining and, you know, there is some damage. But the cool thing about it is it's actually a Palatoy. Oh, yeah. Very light yellowing, too. Yeah, so it's, you know, not bad at all. Cool card. Lynette says, show me the Yodas. Lynette and Aaron are, are patiently waiting for the Yodas. So, you, so the Yodas are still not in. The Yodas are part of that collection that's coming in on Monday. So if it comes in on Monday, like it should, it will be posted on Patreon Monday night, which then will be posted on Rogue a day or two later. So they won't be for sale towards the end of the week because I'll start off doing all this stuff first and then that will just go at the end of the line. Han Solo, small head, 75 grade. It's wow. A 12, 12 back C. Wow, that's nice. So Gary Moore says, I need C-3PO's. I have some C-3PO's. I don't know if I took any out. I definitely have C-3PO's. R2 sensor, Jedi card. I don't know. I, I just like the way it looks. Yeah, it's clear blister. It's unpunched. Nice looking. Oh, yeah. That's really nice. I would like to have that one to go with my tri logo. Here's another R2 sensor on an ESB card. This That's is a nice. 40, 47 back. Got graded a Y80 from UKG. Very nice. These always sell really fast. Like, there's a lot of R2 collectors. And anytime I get a sensor scope, especially on like a Jedi or a ESB card, I'm always surprised how fast they go. There's just a lot of people that just collect them. Yeah. Especially on ESB cards, I feel like those are tougher to, to track down. I guess so. Here's not, you know. He has a Luke Farm Boy on a Jedi card. I know it's the bubble, you know, the blister is kind of yellow, but. You don't really see a lot of these on Jedi cards. No. Mm -mm. Very the nice. Card, the card itself is actually very, very nice. 65B. Yeah, that'd be a 65B. Get that one. Here's John's favorite. Is John's pants get really tight over this one? Oh, God. That star which, drawing. Which one is that? Which uh, 20 back? This is 20 back E. Oh, I think I've got that one. Damn it. UKG 80. Oh, that's a bummer, man. So, I wish I had that. I when you're going through these 20 backs, like this back sticker, and then there's like extended orphans or a red sticker and angles. It's there. There are so many different 20 backs. It like it's just it gets so confusing whenever I look them up. Tim says he's looking for a mint on card Vader, Return of the Jedi lightsaber image. I I I do have one. I do. And I think I took it out into the pile that I'm going to show only because I just love the way it looks. Either that one or it was the Empire one. I can't remember which one I took out. Star Wars Daddy asks, how long does it take you to price everything up on a collection like this to know what to offer them? 
That's so, the trick. <laughs> so the story behind this collection is, is that it came from overseas. And my first question was like, I live in, I live in the, you know, in the U S would it be easier for you to just ship within? And of course, I'm not trying to cut myself off from a, you know, from a deal, but he, he was a friend. I know who he is. I was just trying to make his life easier. I'm like, I do know people that are overseas that you could probably contact. And, and he was like, no, there's, there's, there's three guys that I, you know, that I'm interested in working with. I was one of them. And he goes, I'm going to go with one of you three. And he's like, two of them do live by me and you're, you know, and you're in the U S and I'm just going to go by whoever gives me the best offer. So I want to say it took me about a week. It did. It took me about a week because if you finish this in a day or two and you get back to somebody on 366 mocks, how much research did you actually do to get back to somebody on 366 cards? Like you're, you're trying to check all the sites and Facebook and everywhere, and you're never going to get an exact number. You know, you're always going to have like ballpark, but you do want to like put your time in and do research. So I had about a week and, you know, and then he was happy with my offer and then it just went very smoothly after that. Thankfully, this is the Luke Gunner card. So another Jedi Luke Gunner has a couple of litho tears, but everyone just loves this card back in general. It's like iconic. Well, that's awesome. I guess because it's like a Star Wars scene on a Jedi card. Everyone always seems to love that. This one I just took out. So there's going to be like a wide variety of graded and ungraded. And I would say for the most part, majority of them are ungraded. And I know people actually like them ungraded more when it comes to buying mocks. And they're in all conditions. There'll be beater ones. There'll be some really nice ones. This is one I just took out just to show because it's a Luke X-Wing ESB, but you can see it's very sun faded. Yep. So normally it would be like a really a really expensive card, but this one's not going to be too expensive because it is faded. So it's just to show that really any budget is good because there'll be stuff for everybody. Great. This is a 31 back. Very nice. Any power of the force two? <laughs> Let me guess. Is Jameson asking that question? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> the all, there's only one person who can be asking that question. <laughs> so here's actually one I wanted to show you, and I took this out because I am actually dumbfounded how and why this is. I've never seen this. I've never even encountered this before. So this is a Tuscan Raider, same wow. people, Palatoy card. Wow. But that is this, nice. But this is encased in acrylic. It's glued. It's shut. It was, like, done from the manufacturing company, probably UKG, but there's no label in here. Well, it so, could have it could have been rejected. So they still case it up with no label? Yeah, AFA does that too. So it could have had an ink touch up or something. See, I didn't know that. So I'm sitting here and I have this thing. And I go, how do I break this thing out to take pictures? Because it's not it's not graded. I'm trying to take pictures as best as I can. And does I it have it. any ink touch up to it? You know what, John? You're right. That's why. So oh, yep, right there. See it. Right yep. there. Ink touch up. Yeah, so what happens is when you send stuff into the graders, you can tell them uh, encase it or just send it back as is. That's your option with yeah, AFA. See, I figured they would still slap a label on and say rejected or NA or whatever. To, to see one with no label, I was just like, wow, I've never seen this before, like ever. Yeah, yeah, AFA does the same. So, but, you know, at least, at least you know, you can pro price it appropriately and disclose it and all that. Exactly. So it's a Palatoy Tuscan Raider. It's still cool. Still an awesome item. I hate these stupid cases. Ugh. Next is I took another Luke Jedi because it was the blue saber. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. I'm punched. Wow. Very 65 cool. 65A back. Mm -hmm. Very desirable. Those keep going up in price. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's weird how the blue saber ones always like tend to hold their value or go up. I showed this one because it's a clear blister Jedi card for Akbar. Look at that. It looks case fresh, man. And the card itself is really, really nice. And it's just like, now I know why a lot of people do collect Jedi cards because when the blister is clear, 
just look how cool it looks with the blue background and then the blue logo sign. Like, it really you know, pops. It Remember? Just looks, I, yeah, it just looks good together. I always say that. It really pops. That's a 65B. Here is a R5 D4. Oh, man. So this is a UKG 80, and it's a 20 back. It doesn't actually say which 20 back. I think it's a G. If I remember looking at the photos earlier. Let me see the back. Yeah, so I guess E or G, one of the two. Yeah, I was going to say e, e or G, but, you know, just uh, another cool R5 D4. There's a lot of R5 D4 collectors also. The droids are always very popular. Yep. Well, that's been a 77 brown hair. This is a 77 back A. That's the one I just got actually from CIB. Oh, is it? I probably overpaid for it. Yeah, you could have saved some, you know, some money and bought it from your friend over here, Chris. But well, you didn't have it a month ago, Chris. The blister is actually not too bad. It has faint yellowing around the sides. So not too bad. Here's one that, you know, out of all of them, I don't, you know, I'm actually tempted the most to keep this one. And I'm, we'll see when the sales come, but. Oh, that's the one I want. The Luke Hoth. This is like the 48 back transition. Oh, that's so nice. I want to say it's like ROTJD card 48. Mm. Um, something about this logo with the sticker. When they were transitioning the ESB figures over to the Jedi backing. Yeah, that's a great, great card there. So I like this one. Um, and again, Luke Hoth, he has become probably my second favorite character. I'm after Prune Face. So I keep saying I'm gonna start a Luke Hoth run and I keep holding myself back. So maybe I'll start this time because John really wants it. Just to piss him I off. I didn't really want that one. You you're the one that sold me the, the debut, man. That was a that was a great sale there. Thank so you. I sold I sold you the debut card, and I really wanted it back after I sold it to you. Well, I already did that with Lando. I'm not going to do it twice. But after I did it with Lando, I decided, you know what? Let me not ask and be an India giver twice in a row. <laughs> <laughs> but how many times do you see a 45 back Luke Hoth with a clear blister that got graded? I think an 80 plus. Yeah, no, it was just. It's definitely one of my favorites in my collection. I mean, I can say that about 10 different items that I bought from you over the years. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Another one, chewy, clear blister. 48 back, Return of the Jedi, I think D. It's the transition card. Something about these transition cards, I keep saying, there's like a, the white sticker on the bottom. It's like a Pal Pal toy sticker. sticker. Yeah, look at that. How cool so, is that? You know, that sticker definitely adds some value. Oh, I better adjust my price. Yeah, you better. Here's one for Lynette Snow that she's been asking. I told her <coughs> I was going to put it on the live today. And it's the mm. Boba Fett wow. debut card. I mean, I don't, I think it's the 21B back if I'm, you know, correct. But so the thing about this one, is that there is some damage to it. There's a little lift in the top corner up there. Mm. And then this bottom corner, it just looks like it's been resealed. Oh. So. That'd be a good budget-friendly option, though, for somebody. Well, you know, just the card back alone, that's really nice, can go for three, 400 bucks just for the card back. Yep. So, but yeah, it looks like it's been resealed here. And I wanted to, like, look into it and... You don't want to ever sell something and not be sure, so you always sell it as the worst case possible. So yeah. I can't come back and bite you in the butt. So that's going to be sold. There's a little reseal down there, and there's a little lift up there. Again, you know, has a crease, but it's a nice budget friendly Boba Fett debut who doesn't want to spend ten thousand dollars on a card, which I wouldn't blame them. Lynette's chomping at the bit for that one. Yes, she's already asked about this. She will be first in line to get the pictures from Patreon because she's been asking. I promised her. Wow. So the Boba Fett, you know, it's, again, 
beat up with a crease, but it's a 45 back. And that's what I like about doing this is like, I don't need to hold a Boba Fett graded in 85 to get the same feeling as holding this Boba Fett with a crease in the middle. I still love this card just as much as I would love that one. And this one gets me even more excited because I could take it out and actually hold it. And it gives you a little, it's a little history too. It's just cool to see it yeah. like that. And it's better to put stuff like this on the page because it's just more budget friendly. How many people can really afford ESB FETs? What do they cost? Two to three thousand dollars, you know, for the most part. So yeah. this one's obviously going to be a lot cheaper because it's damaged, but it's just it's just cool. And so a lot of people are asking prices on these. So, you know, I would just say be patient because he's got to finalize all his prices. And, you know, the sales will start on the on the page tomorrow. And yeah, anything I, I mean, for the most part, if there's something that someone's actually interested in and then you message me and said, hey, I'm interested in this one item. Do you have pictures and a price? Of course, I'm going to help you out. But I'll get guys that will be like, they'll send me a list of 30 of them and say, I need all the pictures and prices. Like, I'm not doing that because... You're not going to buy all 30, and I'm just sitting there wasting my time. You can just check it when I list it for sale. You know, so I want to give a shout out to Dominic, Dominic R. He's a good buddy of mine, and uh, he can't he can't join us today because he's taking care of his dad. So I, I hope you're doing okay, Dominic. No no worries about not being on here today, and all the sales will start tomorrow. Hope you're doing okay. What's up, Don? Any try logo? Any try logo? Ending Rogue Five, John. Um, there's no try logos at all. Absolutely no try logos. So it's another Luke Farm Boy UKG eighty. That is a C back. So, so real quick, Darth Wizzy Wizard, thank you for the super. He was like, can, can you give, give any rough ideas of price on those, like the budget friendly fets, for example? Who's asking, Darth? Yeah, just rough ideas. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but I mean, the debut card's probably going to be. I forgot what a. I mean. It was priced different because I didn't know it was a reseal. Mm -hmm. So obviously it was more. So now that we know it's a reseal, it's it's going to be under a thousand dollars for sure, without a doubt. So cool. How about the other one, the forty-five back? I mean, I have a price for it. I don't know off the top of my head, but it is written down. Yep. I think I even sent you the list, John, so you probably have it on your end, too. No, I don't have that anymore, man. I sent it to you, and it's out of my life forever. Okay, good. I'm, that's, what, that's what I like to hear. This wow. one is for Lynette Snow. Darth Vader, Takara. That's a beauty. Unpunched. AF, AFA 75, unpunched. The card got a 75, but everything else is 80, 85 because the card has a crease up top. Yep. But that it's a nice... Awesome. Nice archival case. Again, for me, if I'm buying AFA, I only buy archival, especially on stuff like this. I just, I love archival. Especially when it's like a white figure, you want to make sure that nothing happens. Star Wars Daddy wants it so bad. Star Wars Daddy. Here's one that is getting everyone pissed off on the page. I'm going to show you right now. Oh my god. So is that what I think it is? R5 D4. Oh, red, it is. Red bar. Red bar mint on card. Wow. This is a red bar mint on card. Mm. Was that 21A? 21A back, I believe. Yeah. Wow. That's yep. a stunner. That's a beauty. I mean, it's actually a very nice card. Um, I it's probably gonna grade about a 75, 75 plus overall. Yep. Has a couple of veining up there, but very nice. You know, it's not too often you see a red bar on card. No. I knew that. Oh. So, Something moved so south of the Mason Dixon line with me. And I'm not going to talk more about that, but. <laughs> Does it make you guys angry that I'm using my grubby paws touching this stuff? Because it's actually making me angry that I'm not wearing my gloves right now. And I normally always wear my gloves when I'm touching acrylic. Mm. So, yeah, it's gonna go for a lot. Oh, here's uh, I knew I, I knew I pulled this one aside, 
Is this the is this the Vader that you were talking about? Yeah, somebody was asking about a Vader. Look at that clear uh, blister with the lightsaber image. There's a there was a bunch of uh, Vaders in this batch. Bounty toy hunter, I see your request. When we get off of here, we'll check all the new requests. Okay. Like I said, just please make sure you answer the questions because you automatically will get denied if you don't answer the questions. And as long as you answer the questions, you'll be fine. So that is the Vader Jedi card. Wow. That is a beauty. Look at that. I mean, it has a little crease up here in the top corner, but the blister is clear. And this would be a 65 B back because of the 3PO. Wow. So whenever you see a 65 back, and there's two blacked out figures are the Ewoks. It's automatically a 65A. 65 back with the 3PO down here would be 65B. And then I believe it's what the Emperor offer on the front would be 65C. I know one of those just sold on Hanks fairly recently that was yellow blistered. That still, I mean, I was planning on bidding on it and it was like, nope, it kept going higher and higher. You know, it's all about that. It's all about the card back, like the other guy. I think it was Tim that wanted it. It's it's just a cool, you know, alternate card back image. So, Gary Wallace, thank you for the super. Put your glove on, Chris. Any loose graded stuff, or was this deal just for mocks? It's this is all just mocks. You know, it's weird. If thank you, you guys. Gary. Every collection that always comes in is always different because there's a, not a lot of guys that collect mocks and loose graded. Normally, I'm not going to say all the time, but normally it's usually just mocks or it's just loose graded or it's just loose figures. So they're like whenever I'm buying a collection, it's usually one or the other. This just happens to be mocks. It just goes back and forth. There was a lot of loose graded, I think it was last week on the page, that I came back from AFA and those sold. I think 50 of them came back, and I think 49 of them sold within a day or two. Wow, look at that. Clear blister. Off. So this is a clear blister hot snow trooper. Figure is still nice and white. This is not his debut. It's the 32 back because of the Yoda in the top corner. Wow. That's nice, man. So just a you know, really cool card. Big Wood asked what the year of the red bar. That's got to be as 1978. I mean, for the card, I don't know about the figure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. That can... It's hard to it's hard to to know. I can't really tell, but I'll let John uh, break the blister on that one when he looks at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see what else. So this is wow. a loose farm boy. 20, transition. Yeah, 21 back transition. Unbelievable. That's a beauty, man. Mm. I love these transition cards. I know not a lot of people collect them, but the ones I just got the Death Star droid. I just got the Death Star droid from Hakes. Well, the ones that do collect them are absolutely nuts about them. And I can see why. I just I just love the way they look. Yeah, that 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 little offer really just explodes out of there. It looks amazing. Yeah, so that's a cool one. And you know, I would say he's in. He has some edge wear and stuff, but the blister is clear. He looks, he looks 80. very nice. Yeah, I would say an eighty overall, for sure. That's nice. Here's uh here's a big boy coming up. So wow, holy moly! So this is an ATAT -AT driver, uh, power of the force. For the most people that don't know, he is very hard to get and rare on this card back. I, I think he was only sold down in Australia and New Zealand, yeah, right? I think he was just like an Australian release only. Um, like the Yak Face was a Canadian and Australian. I believe this one was just Australian or and New Zealand. AFA 80. Wow. This got an 80 overall. Oh, my God. It's That's going to be so expensive. 80, 85, 85. And... Again, and you know, it came perfectly from overseas. This was a collector, so the guy packed everything properly and and right. And this thing looks absolutely amazing. It does. That's incredible. So yeah, the blister is yellow, but what power of the force one isn't yellow? Yeah. Let me just move some stuff around. That's amazing. While we're on Power of the Force, I can show you another another one, another cool one. 
And that is the Gamorian Guard. Dear God. Mm. And again, people are like, you know, what's with this is Australian release only, also. So it only came out in Australia, maybe New Zealand also. Not really sure about that. You see the the hang tab, how it's punched differently. It kind of looks like a UFO. Mm-hmm. So that's how you could tell with that. That's an amazing condition, too. This this is in definitely, I would say, 80 plus minimum condition. Yeah, there's an 85 that just sold for like six grand or something crazy. Yeah. So this is like awesome, awesome condition. You know, I would say 80 plus to 85, but it looks like an 85 to me. Oof. It's just it's just really, really nice. It's for people who, you know, I guess collect power of the force, which there's a lot of people that do that. Uh, thank you to Star Wars Daddy for the super. Are there any help? <laughs> are there any help groups for those of us that can't stop buying Star Wars toys? I blame Chris and John. And don't blame me on this, man. Don't blame me. I'll, all I do is spit out the prices on my stupid channel. Chris is the one that actually makes you spend the money. Don't blame me. But thank you for the super uh, Star Wars Daddy. Really appreciate that. This is actually a cool card. It's a snow trooper on a Jedi card. As you can see, the blister is clear. But for most people that know or don't know, in the back of these figures, sometimes there was a little tray Yep. where the figures would lay on. For the vinyl capes, just to keep them from sticking to the back, right? Sticking to the card. So this one actually got factory sealed halfway out. So this, the like the blister is not lifting. This is exactly how it was sealed. As you can see, it's perfectly sealed. How this cool is, is that? This is just the way it was done. So this half yellowed, and then the half that's still in there is clear. That is so crazy. Oh, my gosh. And that's an amazing condition, 77A. I mean, you never yeah. see them clear blister. No, it's in, it, it's, it's in really good condition overall. Yeah, that'll grade very high. A lot of, there's a lot of snow trooper people that like snow troopers too. So. James Stevens says, I, I made it back from Echo Live here in the UK. That was this weekend. Will you start the sales? Will you start start the sales with the Star Wars card backs and then follow with Empire and Jedi in order, or just as it as you have them? You know, it's funny. So that would probably make the most sense, James, by far. But I don't have them in order like that. I kind of have them in order as the shipments came in because I want to say this was sixteen boxes total. So he's been sending in four at a time. So it was four, four, four. And then I have four more coming in next week. So I only got 12 boxes in so far. So the group photos that I listed on Rogue 5, you'll see a table full of cards. When you see me listing cards, it's pretty much going to be that one table worth. If that makes sense to you. Makes sense. Shout out to Cisco and Alex for just joining. Thank you all. What's up, Alex? Make sure to like this stream, guys, if you don't mind. Here's another Luke Jedi Knight. And everyone's probably like, you know, why are you showing a third Luke Jedi Knight? Well, this one has the snap cape. Oh, you cool. See the, see the snap up there? Mm hmm So that's the snap cape one. 65A, which is the debut card. Taiwan. Taiwan. So that one. Very cool. Hammerhead. 21 back A, got graded a CAS 75. Very nice. This one has a little bend to the card. So as you can see, it's over yep. the label a little bit. It's nice, though, because, you know, again, you got across every spectrum of grade and, and every budget. <laughs> and that's why I like this collection, because you don't really want to buy. I mean, me personally, I don't want to buy a collection that's just 80, 85 and up. I like the uh, mid. Hey, real like quick, the mid real quick. Shout out to Nash. He's a friend of Carson's. He's watching. Why I have no idea, but thank you, <laughs> thank you, Nash, for watching. Watching a bunch of old men play with little plastic dolls. Thank you thanks, for watching. Thanks, Nash. Sorry to cut you off, man. So what you were saying? No, I was saying I like the more like mid range, seventy five, low eighty, ungraded stuff because that's more budget friendly to most of the collectors that are out there. Everyone knows is like a top tier collector that it's a very small niche that collects 85s and stuff like that. I was only kidding, Nash. Don't worry. I'm only kidding. Thank you for watching, buddy. 
He has a red schnags. Wow. Graded 80. I believe this is his debut card to 21 back A. See, now I'm obsessed with red snaggle too. They got that uh, engineering pilot on Hakes, and now I want to get a mint on card one. Well, here you go, John. Yeah, that's hey, tempting. Car hey, Karsten, if you want to get your dad a Father's Day gift, um, you can uh, message me. He's gonna, have, yeah, he's gonna need a serious payment plan for that, like three years, <laughs> four dollars a month for the next three. Years. <laughs> so that's all of them that I pulled out for now. I mean, I have a bunch of boxes next to me that I can still go over and look at if you guys want. Yes, we got yeah. we got fifteen minutes, man. Just pull out a few more. I'll entertain these guys on split screen. Oh my god, my stupid face is now back on screen. Oh. And for those of you watching, thank you so much. If you all have uh, questions, feel free to post them in the in the chat. Uh, make sure to, uh, to to like me on Instagram. Join me on Instagram at Action Figure Grader. Uh, but Chris is a good buddy of mine. I'll just really quickly, not to like, not to inflate his oversized ego any more than it already is, but. I've bought with Chris many years now. I've, I've traded with Chris. I always end up losing on the trades, but Chris is uh, as professional as it gets. It's a hundred percent trusted, and uh, you can you can be sure that he's going to pack it really well and ship really quickly. Provide you tracking, all that good stuff. So I usually ship like the next day. If if you don't have Build a Box with me, so I do a service called Build a Box. So pretty much you can buy a bunch of items in a row. I can sit here and hold your box for a month, two months. I, I've actually, I have people's boxes here for three years. I have a guy who spent $5,000 three years ago. His items are still sitting here. They've never gotten shipped, but they're still here. So you can trust me that your items are always going to be here. Not three years ago? Why, why bother? Why bother buying it? <laughs> three years ago, he bought a sealed Millennium Falcon and a sealed Imperial shuttle. Wow. So they're still sitting here, like I said, for three years. So if you want to do build a box, it's usually ten dollars to ship one mock. But if you buy a couple of them, it's still ten dollars to ship out like three of them. That's just the way the postal service goes. So I can sit here, you can buy them, and I hold your items. You just pay as you go. Shipping will be done at the very end. It's all combined into one price. Lay a Bespin. Jedi card. This is a 65 back B. Nice. I want to say there's probably every every single character on one or two card backs minimum. So like the guy that wanted the 3PO, there's definitely a couple of 3PO's in here. Just depends on <laughs> well, right. you know. He's not you do give really good deals. You give really good deals on the vintage collection and black series. Yes, because I want that stuff. Whenever I buy a collection on that, I want that stuff in and I want it out as fast as possible because it just takes up so much space. So yep. I'll sit here with like six large boxes of modern stuff. So I try and kind of just give them away at blowout prices. Mm -hmm. And yes, the Leia Bestman is made in China. Man, I've been, I've been on so many loose gridded China Leia Bespin's and lose every single time. How hard is she to get a loose graded made in China Leia Bespin figure? It's so expensive too. It's so ridiculous. That was actually one of them in my loose graded set. And you know how many I had and all the variants I had. I never had a Leia Bespin one ever. There's been a few UKG graded ones, but I always lose them. Always. Add at driver, Jedi card, 77 back A. And like I said, if someone is interested in something, you can message me. I can give you, you know, more pictures beforehand. I can give you a price. You can't buy them right now. You still have to wait for me to list them because I, I really do my best. As hard as it is, I try and be fair to everyone on the page because there's like 3,000 people. And a lot of people are overseas. and It's different times. And I, I really try my, like my hardest just to be fair to everybody. Which it's always hard to. How much is the kitchen set in the background? The kitchen set would actually be free if you want to come pick that up. We did that too. We we had one of those, and we just said, "Here, take it, please, take yeah. it." I mean, as you can see, my kids have that chalkboard on the wall. 
that's actually a built-in chalkboard. So I put the trimming up, and that's black paint that you can use real chalk, and it wipes right off afterwards. Yeah, we had that too. Uh, Tim, to answer your question, yes, you could reach out to Chris or myself, and I'll hook you up with them. Uh, we've done that for a number of subscribers on my channel over the years. This is a Canadian uh, ATS driver. Very cool. 77 back. I, I, again, this is just another one of those card backs that I don't know why I like them, but I do. I love the coin offers. Uh, me too. Death Squad Commander. That's cool. Clear Blister, you know, has a little hanger issue up there, but very cool. Again, there's a there's a little bit of something here. I always love the coin offers on ESB cards. Those are my favorites. Yeah, it's always weird how you find one once in a while on an ESB card. Yeah. So here is oh, that just fell. That is okay. a uh, acrylic case that will be for sale for ten dollars. It was a very nice mock until it's not anymore. <laughs> Papalu, Power of the Force. That's why sometimes I don't like these cases because the bottoms just will slide right out. Yeah. And then there goes the card. Rob asks, are you keeping anything for your personal collection? Thank God that was only a low grade. No one cares about low grade. <laughs> um, there's a couple of them that I am going to keep until the very end. To kind of see how I do because I did lay out like a lot of money on this stuff. And I just want to like make sure that I'm able to get my payment back. And then I'm more than happy to keep a couple of cards as my profit for the collection. I don't necessarily need to make money on it. I would just like to have three or four cards and I would be more than happy to add to my collection. Shout out to usual Mike Television down in Australia. It's Five o'clock in the morning there, and he's joining us. What's up, Mike? Mike, thank you, man. Hope you're doing well, buddy. This is another Vader with the Jedi image. This one has a yellow blister. 65 back B. Here is everyone's favorite card. Everyone loves them, yet no one wants to buy them. I do. Dengar. <laughs> I've got five of them. <laughs> Dengar. This is like a 41 E back. Yeah, E. So. Dengars are always on 41 E's. They were coming out of the woodwork when I was looking for them. So here's actually a good little teaser to go through. Dengar and FX7. They are both really big figures with big blisters. And if you ever notice, the blisters are always damaged. And always. They're always banged up in the corners and whatever. And the reason why is because these two apparently were like big peg warmers back in the day. So that when you walked into stores to buy stuff, there was always FX7s and Dangars that were hanging around, always getting beat up. So when you see a Dengar and an FX7, and it's for a really high price because it's a high grade, and people are like, who the hell spends that much money? It's because of the blister. Because the blisters are always banged up and they're always like dents and stuff. Yep. That's an FX7 debut card. That's cool. Yeah. But that's his debut. I know Todd B loves FX7. He loves 21B also, right? And he loves 21B. So this is uh Wow. Han Solo Han Solo Carbonite, and that's Lumat, Power of the Force. Great nice. It's just incredible collection, man. Yeah, like I said, there's just a you know, there's a little of everything. This one. Wow. Luke X Wing graded power of the force 80. And the ye yellow wing's not too bad on that one either. No, so there's actually two of these. So this is the Hong Kong one with a little yellowing on the card, but the card overall is very nice. Yeah. And then there's actually a made in Mexico one. Let me see if it's here. Made in Mexico with the clear blister. Oh, yeah. Very nice. So you'll see the little hole punch right there that was done at the factory. That's even higher than usual. So, but, you know, nice cooler blister. And you can see how the blisters were done differently and put on differently in Mexico. Mm -hmm. You don't really see that waffle pattern behind it. Yeah. 
people always will message me and say, is this a reseal? <laughs> I uh, get that question a lot. <laughs> and, then I, and then I'm like, well, turn it around. Is it made in Mexico or is it made in Spain? Because even the made in Spain was a different. And it usually always is. And I'm like, yeah, that's why. It was just made differently. It's made poorly. Which I didn't know that about the made in Spains until you and I were looking at one, trying to just decipher if it was a reseal or not. And yeah, exactly. I pulled, mine up, I pulled my Greedo up and I was like, yep, you're right. And that's like I said, and that's the cool thing about Star Wars. That's the reason why I love it and people love it because you're always still learning things every single day that you just didn't know. Oh, dude, like Aaron M., who just became a Patreon, he told me he told me all about the history of Spanish figures and how I was telling everybody wrong on my channel. And he was right. I, he, he gave me some links. You know that the Spanish Pock factory never actually produced any Spanish figures. It was always the PBP factory. Pock just merged with like three other companies. And so you got early PBP and then you got later PBP. And it was just like, man, I had no idea that Pock never... No, but they called it POC for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, they called it POC, yeah. Anyway, and, I just never knew that. And those were all made with Hong Kong pieces, I believe. And then the PBP are no COO, right? Scar, yeah, or Scar. Scar, whatever. So, another at at driver, 45 back, A. Rancor Keeper. This is who I call John Rula with a wet towel over his head. Wow, that is just unnecessary. So if John Rula gained about 50 pounds, this is probably what he would look like. I wouldn't I would, need to gain 50. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much spot on, man, unfortunately. Get out of here. You're like, you look like an earthworm. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> here's a, Oh, here's another cool card. Death Star Droid Jedi. I always love Death Star droids. Always. I had someone this morning message me, and he was like, hey, do you have any Greedo? And I said, yeah. I said, well, which one are you looking for? And he goes, well, any of them. And I ended up having a Greedo on the Star Wars card, which was like a 21 back. And then it was a 41, like B back, whatever it was. And then it was a Jedi made in Spain one. And he was like, what do you have, Greedo on every card? And I'm like, that's just how this collection is. Like, like I said, there's pretty much every figure on some sort of card back at some point. Right. Do you have any uh, Leia Hoth on a Jedi? Speaking of Greedo. There's Greedo. Um, there is. I believe the Leia Hoth is graded too. Cool. So there is So there is a Leia Hoth on a Jedi card. I want to say it's like UKG80. Cool. Oh, we got a couple of cool ones after this coming up. Regular Lumat. Made in Mexico. Beauty. Yeah, it's actually a Canadian card. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So Offerless, offerless too. Rebel Commando. Everyone's favorite Rebel Commando. You hardly ever see those made in Mexico on the Canadian cards that are I offerless. Know. They're almost always the offer, like the 60 yeah. or 75, the, the, uh, the one with the Emperor. Or not the Emperor, the uh, Anakin. The Anakin. Yeah. So here's a Hammerhead ESB card. There's a C-3PO Takara. Very cool. Wow. Basically, it's just a regular 12-back, and they slapped this Takara sticker on it. So it's not the alternate head? Mm, I don't think so, no. No. This would be a 12-back B. No, it is. It, look, look, do a close-up of that. Is that the alternate? No. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. No, I no, thought maybe it was the alternate. I know Hammerhead's head is the, definitely the alternate because he's looking to the other way. Good Lord. What now, a weird figure he is. This is why the head is always loose because when you put him in a package like this, it was put sideways, and you could take him right off the card, and his head is always still loose. Yeah. A lot of people like Hammerhead. I just I always found it like, what was the point of him? Gary Moore says that is the alternate head. I don't know. I couldn't tell just because my screen is blurry, but it looked like it had that weird oblong portion at the bottom. For the Takara C-3PO, he said it's the alternate head. I mean, I can show you pictures because I wouldn't know offhand, to be honest with you. There you go. Michael wow. Scout, Power of the Force. This is a graded 12-back 85. 85. C -back. Okay, he says not. Never mind. I didn't think 85. it is. I, th I thought it, it looks exactly the same as a regular one, but. It's know. pretty noticeable. It's got kind of a weird portion on the lower part of his jaw. Here is Lando. Yeah, you're going to pay me back now on the Lando? The Lando you stole from me? Uh, how dare you? 
Leia Bush Jedi. This is a 77 back A. And this is a 32 back, so it's not the debut. It's a 31. This is a 32 back. How's that Lando? I might need. I might have to buy that. Mm. Uh, has sticker residue on the top, so he'll be cheaper. That's nice. So, which is weird though, because this stuff actually does come off. So, hey, I can you pull the? Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you pull the Power of the Force Biker Scout back up? Uh, several of my friends have asked about that one. They just want to see the condition of it. Yeah, just just give me a second. Let me no rush. Uh, just want to open up this one first. So, for a lot of people that don't know, and again, I've done it with my personal ones. I don't do anything on ones that I sell. But you see how there's like a little sticker residue on the top of the card? And mm -hmm. even when it's on the blister, if you put a little lighter fluid on like a Butane, red, right? Butane? Yeah. And you can actually rub it. It actually does come off. You just want to go very, very lightly because you don't want to like rip the card and do litho tears on it. So I'm not saying that it's going to come off. I'm saying there's a possibility that it could come off. Gotcha. But it's sold as is like this. So I've never it, I've never tried that. I've been too too much of a chicken. I've actually tried it on a personal car that I was sending in for grading on a 31 back. I want to say it was a Leia Bespin, her her debut, and it came out absolutely perfect and it got graded in 85. Uh, so Jimmy, Jimmy Greg corrected me. He said it's not butane, it's just the regular letter liquid well, letter. Regular lighter fluid, right? Yeah. That, because that's what I've used in the past is regular lighter fluid. It doesn't affect the grade, right? If you use it. It got graded in, in, in uh, 85, mine. That's great. It doesn't leave anything after underneath it. Like it, it doesn't leave like bubbling or anything. You have to just do it very, very lightly. Wow, that is a beautiful condition, Biker Scout. Has a couple of, uh, you know, some scuffing on that top corner right there. And Let's the get an 80. That's an the 80. blister is nice and clear. That's an 80. That's the back. Card score might be a 75 because the edge wear. But... Some edge wear, yeah. But I, th I think it gets an 80 overall. I mean, I think if we sent this into to, to CIS, we would get like a low 80. Yeah. I think, it would, I think it might get an 80 even with AFA, though. It's funny. When it comes to uh, mock, CIS definitely grades, I think, overall just as hard as AFA does. Well, I'll try logos. They grade harsher than anybody. And, and you remember I told you that a while ago. Yeah, it's I true. Sent, too. I sent in like seven or eight tri logos. This was like years ago. And I thought they were all going to come back like 80 and 85s. And I think most of them came back 75 and two of them were 80s. And I was just shocked that they graded so hard on these. Yeah, they really grade them the harshest of the three. And I, and overall, that's probably a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. So Yeah. Debut. Look at that. TIE Fighter, 47 back. Is this his debut? Yep, that's the debut. Okay. Yeah. I always thought that he was 45, but I guess not. No, yeah, he's 47. That's a that's an expensive card, even slightly yellowed like that. It's very, very expensive. Yeah, he has uh he has a little yellowing in the corner, graded that way, which is good. So, but very nice. And let's see what else is here. We got a bid fortuna. Oh, here we go. I wasn't sure if it was in this box, but someone just asked about it. There we go. Leia Hoth and a Jedi card. She got yep. graded a UKG Y80. Very Unpunched. Nice. 77A. Nice card back. And again. Tim probably not. Tim, Tim asked about Vectus. I probably will not, to be honest with you. I just, it's exhausting trying to cover all this. <laughs> I don't know anything about Vectus. <laughs> there's, there's just too many of them. Look not on a Jedi card. Wow. That's nice condition, too. You know, again, there's four more boxes down there of mocks that we could go through, or if you want to call it a day. Yeah, I think we got a, gave a good idea. I mean, we had 50 watchers. Thank you all for watching so much. Uh, and please leave a like on this if you don't mind. Um, any other parting shots, Chris, before we wrap up? No, all I was going to say is, like I said, I, if anyone wants to claim anything or buy anything, I will do payment plans as long as they're like you know within reason. Um, I don't, I never mind doing up to four weeks or so on a payment plan, which is perfectly fine. Um, just message me beforehand. If anyone is interested in seeing up close pictures or something, 
message me if I don't get back to you right away. It's just because I'm getting a zillion messages, but I will get back to you at some point. And I'm going to start selling these tomorrow. Again, I, I wish I could sit here and say I'm going to sell from 10 to 4. But as you know, my life doesn't work that way. I, got a, <laughs> I have a 4-year-old, a 2-year-old, and a 4-month-old. So I kind of go around their schedule. Whenever my wife is not yelling at me, I'm hiding in the corner <laughs> making a listing. Which know, is rare. Which is rare. Know, yeah. <laughs> I tell her that I'm going into the bathroom and I'm really sitting there making a listing over the sink. So, <laughs> you know. G Gary yeah. asked, is it okay to message you? Yeah, message me over Facebook. Absolutely. And like I said, I'll try and get back to you, you know, whenever I can. If you want to see more pictures or something, I have no problem doing that whatsoever. Um, and yeah, if anyone else wants to join, if you're not on Facebook already, just message either me, John, or one of the other four idiots, which is my brother, Brandon Alamo, Shane Davison, and John Walden. Say, hey, I'm going to be making up a Facebook account. My name is really this, but I'm going to put it as Joe Schmo. No problem. Like, I don't – listen – People want to hide stuff from their wives. People want to hide stuff from friends. Like, I get it. I have absolutely no problem. Just tell us beforehand so we know it's like a legit name or a legit person or like a human being. And I'm fine with that. Cool. Cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed looking at at least a small smidgen of a preview of these awesome items that Chris has. Mint on cards, about 300 plus that will be listed over the next week yeah. over on Rogue Five Toys. And Chris, thank you for taking the time to show us some of these awesome items and I hope the sales go well for you. Thank you. And I appreciate you having me on, um, getting the collection out there again. If anyone wants to, we are on patreon.com, uh, five idiots talking toys. Um, we put up every collection before it goes for sale. You can see a preview on there beforehand and, um, yeah, just shoot me a message if anyone's interested in anything. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all again for watching and we're going to wrap it up and we'll be back soon. Thank See you guys. Later. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>